I don't know why, but Titus 3.5 was printed out in the box, and at some point last week, I think I mentioned that we should grapple with it, and I'm glad that I, because this text is, oh, it's glorious. He saved us. God the, the mercy of God the Father appeared. Uh, it's, a, it's a glorious and fantastic text. Let's take... We got a bonus grappling today. I don't remember why, but this was printed off, and I remember talking about it, and it's great. I mean, this is a really fantastic text to look at. Let me adjust this doodad here. How about that? Titus 3, and it's a helpful verse to, to grapple with because it's, I mean, number one, it's so fantastically comforting, but also it's a bit complicated. It's, a, it's one of these long sentences, three-verse sentences from St. Paul that it's good to look at and get to the center of. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through, our, uh, through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now the main clause in this whole long sentence is this business right here. He saved us. That's the main, that's the subject, object, subject, verb, and object. And who is the he that's saving? It's God our Savior in this text. This is God the Father. Oftentimes Jesus is called the Savior, but Jesus is going to come down. We got the Father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. So it's a particularly Trinitarian verse. And what did God do? He saved, and who is the us? The us is us, the Christians. St. Paul, Titus, all the Christians that are there, all those who um, who need saving. Now, uh, it, it's answering, so here's the main clause, but it's answering the question, well, when did he save us? How did he save us? Why did he save us? Through what mechanism did he save us? And what's the result of him saving us? So all of those things are going to flow out of this text. So the first is, well, when did he save us? Well, he saved us when the kindness and love of God the Father toward man appeared, epiphanied. So when the kindness of God showed up. Th this, by the way, is why we read this text as the epistle on Christmas Day, because this is talking about the incarnation. When Jesus comes and when the Savior first reveals his sacred face, then it's the kindness of God and the love of God appearing. This is so... Ah, oh, it's so fantastic, because we normally think that what's showing up is the anger of God, the wrath of God, etc., etc. No, that Jesus is the kindness of God and the love of God. It, it manifests in the flesh, showing up to save us. And, and so we're saved. So when? That's how. Now, how? The question is, how did he save us? And the answer first is a negative, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. So works are excluded from salvation. It's not by works, the works of righteousness, which we do. We're not saved by works. Uh, in fact, we're saved by God's mercy, by grace. So not by works, but according to his mercy. Now here, works are contrasted with mercy. And this runs all through the scriptures. That it's, it's not by, uh, by the doing of a work, but by the promise of God's mercy. So those are set against each other, and it, and we don't want to confuse them. This is the distinction between the law and the gospel. And so Paul doesn't just say he saved us by his mercy, or he doesn't say not just by works. No, works are, con are excluded from, the work, from God's working of sanctification. So he saved us according to his mercy. Now, how did he say, uh, by, how or by what means did he save us? That's going to be the question here. And it's going to say, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now, this washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit belong together. This is not two distinct things, but one particular thing. And the thing is baptism. Remember how Jesus talks about this with Nicodemus in John 3, 5. It's the water and the Spirit. These two go together, and so it is here. It's the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now, this word regeneration occurs, I think, four times or something, the idea in the scriptures, and it's especially here and in John 3, 5, that the regeneration, the new birth, is connected to the Lord's gift of baptism. In 1 Peter 1, 
and in James 1, I don't know the verses, but 1 Peter 1 and James 1, it's connected to the Word. But it's the same deal. Have you been born again? Well, yeah, look, I've been baptized. So, by what means did he save us? Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through our Savior Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit, the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit comes through Jesus Christ. We remember John chapter 7, where it says Jesus had not sent the Holy Spirit because he had not yet ascended. And part of the ascension of Jesus is to, for the particular reason of pouring out the Holy Spirit. That's what one of the great gifts of Pentecost. Why does the camera keep getting closer and closer to the page? Urgh. That's better. Pretty soon you're going to be looking at my fingernails. So that, uh, so that Jesus ascends into heaven so that he can send forth the Holy Spirit. And what's the result? Well, there's a handful of results. One, we are justified by his grace. This justification means to be imputed or to be declared righteous. So that the perfection of Jesus is given to our account. Just as Jesus kept the law for us, now the, the Lord looks at us and says, you are righteous. So we have been justified by his grace. And number two, we then become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So we now that we now are justified and, the, and we then will be raised to eternal life. So that we live by faith, we have justification by faith, and we have eternal life by hope. See it? So we live by faith uh, in the promise of God and the forgiveness of sins. <laughs> Back up, camera. Stay there. We have faith in the forgiveness of sins, and we have hope for eternal life. There you go. That is Titus. What a fantastic verse. What a dose of mercy. He saved us, not by works, which we have done, but by his mercy and his kindness. We got to keep our nose in the text. That's one of the things that we learn from grappling. And when we put our nose in the text, we hear things that we could, we, that we can't hear anywhere else. That the Lord loves us, that He's merciful, and that He's kind, and that He's gracious. That He saves us apart from our own working and doing, simply by His kindness. 